Um, welcome to this part two of tonight's uh, Opportunity Zone Meetup on the topic of workforce housing. And uh, what I'm going to uh, talk about in this section is what's the challenge of workforce housing and why it's important and how it impacts or, or may be impacted by Opportunity Zones. And then in the next section we'll talk about the model that we're proposing for consideration as a solution to this particular problem. So um, right now there's a housing shortage. Uh, this, uh, the Harvard Institute does an annual report on availability of housing and each year it's gotten worse and worse and worse. And uh, right now the current data is that for every 100 low income households there's only 25, 29 uh, available units for rent. And, and I'm making an important distinction between rent and ownership because uh, most everything is focused on a rental uh, payback mechanism, which is one of the challenges that I have. Uh, but uh, I've talked to lots of communities, both rural communities, urban communities, deep uh, metro communities, and workforce housing is a problem almost everywhere. And the lower the income, the greater the problem. And, and so what it, you're seeing all kinds of issues that are related to that that are impacting the community generally but also having a specific impact on some of the businesses in those communities. Um, the long-term common solution to low-income housing has been called affordable housing. Uh, this is a government tax program uh, where they provide a tax credit uh, under a series of rules that you have to conform to. A developer can build a, uh, a property they can set aside a certain percentage of those for low-income people, but for it to qualify for the tax credit, it can be no more than 30% of the income of people who are earning no more than 60% of the average median income, or AMI. And um, so uh, this is what's going on, and it's not working. And uh, the problem is that as property prices rise in a community like Denver, and wages do not follow at the same rate, you start creating situations where the cost to build the housing and make it available uh, will create a cost point, uh, however you do the allocation, that is higher than the rents that you're allowed to charge for that particular property. So you're automatically upside down. And the whole purpose of the tax credit was to try to address this delta, this difference in the losses. But as we've seen property values continue to rise, it's gotten beyond that point so the tax credit no longer will fill the gap and people just quit building. This is, I can't build these and lose money, so I'm not going to build them. And, and that's part of the reason why we're seeing this continuing growth or, or lack of, of housing for people in lower incomes because this program, uh, as much as it's been the mainstay over a period of time, it's now basically losing ground almost everywhere. Even in rural communities, you'll see a situation where you go, I wouldn't expect that to happen here, but it's even working as a problem in a rural community. So um, the other thing that I consider a challenge is that almost all affordable housing projects only allow the tenant to rent the property. There is no opportunity to become an owner in that property and without becoming an owner, there's no chance to grow, engage in wealth building with real estate as part of a personal wealth building uh, strategy. And, and so what will happen is somebody will come in, they'll spend their income on this as a rental, and 10 years later, they're still spending their income as a rental, and they don't have any savings. They're still in the same economic status they were before because a lot of their income is going out the door in this manner. And it... Uh, uh, I've talked to a number of groups who do affordable housing. I keep asking them, oh, why don't you have an ownership component in here? And the general answer is, we didn't know about it, and this is working okay. Uh, so pretty much we're done. And, and that's been their answer. And, uh, you know, and I go, I appreciate you putting roofs over people's heads. I'm not against it. I'd like you to do all you can do, but it's not working anymore for 
the growing concern. So we're trying to come up with something that we either uh, supplement or complement or fill this gap, and that's what we're going to be talking about tonight. Um, the other thing is that um, where people have a chance to buy ownership in those rare opportunities where an affordable housing project does have an ownership component, it's very common for the person who wants to buy the house to not have the money to make the down payment. Uh, that if they have to put 10% down, uh, they can't get there from here. Now, there are programs like VA that will pick up and allow you to borrow 100% of the value. And there's a number of programs that are directed to specific communities, maybe local, that are addressing this, trying to uh, make it easier on the down payment. But again, this is another issue, is that even if you are allowed to buy, uh, you have to come up with the down money. Um, so one of the big complaints, or maybe the biggest complaint about opportunity zones is that it causes gentrification. Uh, gentrification, by and large, means that property values go up and the people in the community can no longer afford to live there. There's a whole list of things uh, that are talked in more detail in the handout uh, that you'll be getting uh, about whether or not you know, they're forced out because they're renters and they can't afford to pay the rents, or the property owner has to pay higher property taxes, tries to pass that through the rents, which forces the rents up. And it all works in a very negative fashion. Um, so um, part of the, the purpose of Opportunity Zones is to improve the economic vitality, the economic health of a community. And if it works, if it's healthier, property value is going to go up. There is just no way around it. So uh, if somebody's doing a comprehensive community planning or strategy, they actually need to be implementing programs that allow the current uh, community members to stay in place. And there's a variety of things that are being discussed and other models I'm talking to people about which are for that purpose, which is, yeah, we'd like for the value to go up, but we'd like the people in the community to participate in that some way so they can stay in the community and are not forced out of the community. Uh, but if they're forced out, uh, then you have the issue that they, their job may be still in the community they just left, and now they have a transportation cost on top of the fact that they're not living in the community. They have a longer time away from home, which is harder with the, helping with kids. And this thing, just as I say, it spirals downward in a hurry. Um, the other thing, and this is coming up in a number of communities I'm working with, they are successful in getting a new business or relocation of a business into their opportunity zone and automatically they have a workforce housing problem. It just follows them like a shadow into the community where they're going, yeah, we're, we need 100 workers uh, for this new plant, and we don't have enough houses in the inventory in this small, particularly rural community to hold everybody. And, and the plan was to build the facility and put up the plan in. There's no plan for housing. And, and they're going, we can't open until we have enough workforce commitments. And the whole thing could slide down the road and never get started. So we're looking at this, again, from a standpoint, we want opportunity zones to do what they want to do to help the community. But we may have to think broader than a business. We may have to take a community, uh, if you want to call it background or focus, and build that into the strategy so this becomes a little bit more complicated model. But it's one that improves the likely success of the original plan. Uh, because without that, if you can't get the workers in there, then you're, you're not going to be able to do everything you want to do to either grow the business or to uh, relocate a business. So uh, that brings me to the end of this session. Did anybody have any questions about affordable housing, workforce housing, anything along that line at this point before we move on? Yeah. Um, just for some of the programs that you've seen discussed that are, what they look like trying to keep um, working, uh, yeah, we can uh, be on camera on this. The, um, one of the programs we're looking at is a fix and flip program where uh, you would go in and buy a house in a community, you would fix it up, and then you would sell it back to a member in the community, but you'd take a portion of the profits from the appreciated value, and you would contribute that as a down payment to move somebody from a renter to an owner, even in a house that they're already in. So it, it's, you know, you're using the appreciation of the building by fixing it up uh, in order to uh, set the table to have enough money to assist with the down payment. So good things there. So let's take a short break here.